in an atmosphere of dignity and respect. Your cooperation will be greatly appreciated. Thank you.
Honor, guard. Purging zone. Us, head, turn. Ceremonial. Ceremonial. At eat. The President of the United States has arrived and is being greeted by the host for today's observance, the Honorable Dennis McDonough, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, and Major General Alan M. Pepin, Commanding General of Joint Task Force National Capital Region and the United States Army Military District of Washington. The Armed Forces Honor Guard and United States Army Band, Hershing Zone, are formed and waiting as the President moves to the tomb of the unknown soldier to place the wreath.
Order, guard. Attention.
The wreath laying ceremony is now complete. The Veterans Day program will begin momentarily. Please move to your seats. Present arms. Retire the color. Color. Left wheel. Move. Commanders, take charge of your units. Hurt and go.
platoon ho hurt hurt Air Force Platoon, Bow, Air, Hurt! Coast Guard Platoon!
Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Alan M. Pepin, Commanding General of Joint Task Force National Capital Region and the United States Army Military District of Washington. Ms. Karen Durham Aguilera, Executive Director, Office of Army Cemeteries and Army National Military Cemeteries. Mr. Alan Payton, National Commander, Jewish War Veterans of the United States of America. and the Honorable Dennis McDonough, Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Juliana Lesher, National Director of Chaplain Service for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we come before you this day to honor our nation's veterans those men and women who have bravely given of themselves on behalf of all of us as a nation. Throughout our nation's history, you, God, created and designed each of our nation's veterans with unique gifts, abilities, talents, and values, which would guide and direct them to a unified calling and mission, the defense of our nation's freedoms. And we are ever so grateful for those men and women who sacrificially chose to leave the comforts of family, friends, home, and security to use their God-given gifts and abilities for the most noble mission of the preservation of our nation. Our nation's veterans have faced horrific challenges on land, sea, and air, and you, as our omnipresent and ever-abiding God, have strengthened and upheld our service members and veterans through their darkest hours. You are the God who sees, who sees and understands each of us. Though humanly we do not know the names and diverse characteristics of all who have served, you, God, know. As the inscription on the Tomb of the Unknown reminds us, here rests, in honored glory, an American soldier known but to God. Thank you for uniquely designing each of us, for knowing each of us, and for your everlasting care. As we honor our nation's veterans, May you, God, continually equip each of us to give of ourselves in a purposeful mission and calling which seeks to uphold and honor the well-being of our nation. 
In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now, I'd like to invite Mr. Alan Paley, National Commander, Jewish War Veterans of the United States of America, to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. It is now my distinct privilege to introduce the members of the Veterans Day National Committee located in box seats throughout the amphitheater. The committee was formed by presidential order in 1954 to plan this annual observance in honor of America's veterans and to support Veterans Day observances throughout the nation. Please hold your applause until I have introduced these special guests. If you're able, please stand when your name is called. Mr. Alan Paley, National Commander, Jewish War Veterans of the United States of America. Mr. Tom Burke, National Vice President, Vietnam Veterans of America. Mr. Matthew M. Fritz Mahelchik, Commander in Chief, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Retired Navy Chief, James W. Campbell, National President, Fleet Reserve Association. Mr. Gregory S. Hoon, National Commander, AMVETS. Mr. Charles Shearer, National Commander, Army and Navy Union. Retired Navy Fleet Master Chief, Paul A. Kingsbury, President, Non-Commissioned Officers Association. Mr. Corey D. Bates, National Vice Commander, the American Legion. Mr. James McCormick, National Commander, Military Order of the Purple Heart. Retired Marine Corps Sergeant Major Johnny Baker, National Commandant, Marine Corps League. Retired Army Chaplain, Brigadier General Robert Pliskowski, National President, Military Chaplains Association. Retired Marine Corps Corporal Charles Brown, National President, Paralyzed Veterans of America. Retired Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Jack Murray, National Commander, Legion of Valor of the United States of America. Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Michael A. Oaken, MD, Commander-in-Chief, Military Order of the World Wars. Mr. Justin Jump, National President, the Retired Enlisted Association. Retired Army Staff Sergeant Leroy A. Petrie, President, Congressional Medal of Honor Society. Mr. Andy Marshall, National Commander, Disabled American Veterans. Retired Air Force Lieutenant General Dana T. Atkins, President and Chief Executive Officer, Military Officers Association of America. U.S. Public Health Service Commander Kelly Valente, Chair, Board of Directors, Commissioned Officers Association of the United States Public Health Service. Retired Air Force Chief Master Sergeant Carrie Wright, International President, Air Force Sergeants Association. Mr. Robert Swan, National Commander, Polish Legion of American Veterans. Mr. Jeffrey J. Brodeur, National President, Korean War Veterans Association. Mr. Luis A. Vasquez Contiz, National Commander, American GI Forum. Mr. David Crum, National Commander, Catholic War Veterans of the United States. Mr. Joseph D. McNeil, Sr., National President, 
Blinded Veterans Association. The associate members of the committee are also located in seats throughout the amphitheater. I'd like to ask the presidents and national commanders that comprise our associate membership to stand and be recognized. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing our veterans' national leadership with your applause. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Executive Director, Office of Army National Cemeteries and Army National Military Cemeteries, Ms. Karen Durham Aguilera. Good morning. On behalf of the dedicated men and women who serve here, welcome to Arlington National Cemetery. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the 46th President of the United States, President Joe Biden. Thank you, Mr. President, for being here today, honoring our nation's veterans. And our First Lady, Jill Biden, welcome. The Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd Austin. Secretary of Veteran Affairs, the Honorable Dennis McDonough and his wife, Kari. Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine Warmoth. Chief of Staff of the Army, General McConville and his wife, Maria, welcome. And Mr. Alan Paley, the National Commander of the Jewish War Veteran, thank you for being the Veterans Service Organization's host and for your participation in this important national observance. And to all dignitaries and families and everyone watching from across our great nation, thank you for being with us today. The cemetery is beautiful this time of year, and it is fitting that we once again recognize our veterans on these most hallowed grounds. Today is a celebration of honor, duty, and patriotism our International Cemetery is a solemn place surrounded by over 400,000 soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and Coast Guard men, and their families who have proudly served our nation in peacetime and in war. While Memorial Day is dedicated to remembering those whom we have lost, today is a celebration of all of those who have worn the uniform, including and especially those who are still with us. I encourage each and every one of you to pause for a moment today and thank a veteran or military family member for their service and sacrifice. Today may be solemn, but it can also be joyous, as we remember loved ones, friends, comrades in arms who have served and may still be serving. I will also briefly talk about an historic event that concludes today with this observance. For the last year, we have held events to commemorate the centennial of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier with the interment of the World War I unknown. 100 years ago today, that service member completed his final journey from France and was laid to rest here in the heart of Arlington National Cemetery to represent all service members who had lost their lives and their identities. We did so to provide comfort and closure to those family members who were never given the opportunity to lay to rest their child, husband, or father. More of the history of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier can be found in our commemorative educational programs online. I encourage everyone to learn more about this iconic site. Stories of the service and sacrifice we celebrate today are etched in marble all around us, from the inscriptions on gravestones to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Most important are the patriotism, valor, and fidelity etched in the hearts and souls of our service members, past, present, and future. They are the vanguard of our freedom and our liberty. Today is for the past 157 years. Our International Cemetery is honored to serve our veterans and their families at our nation's most sacred shrine. No place at our International Cemetery can be purchased. Each must be earned through audible service. To everyone here today, I'm proud to say we are a great people, honoring service and sacrifice to a grateful nation. So thank you to all of our veterans and families, and once again, welcome to Arlington National Cemetery. I will be followed by the National Commander of the Jewish War Veterans, Mr. Alan Paley. Thank you.
President Biden, Secretary McDonough, Director Aguilera, Major General Pepin, distinguished guests, my fellow veterans, ladies and gentlemen. On Veterans Day, at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month, we pause for a few brief moments to both honor and pay tribute to the men and women who served in the defense of our country and then returned home. We owe you our thanks, our respect, and our freedom. George Washington spoke about the country's obligation to care for its veterans and their families. He said, the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any way shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. Let us remember, treated and appreciated. Engraved on a granite wall of the Korean War Memorial a short distance from here is a simple but powerful phrase, freedom is not free. The freedoms we enjoy today were made possible by the more than 19 million living veterans and countless others who served in the defense of our country. The symbols of America and freedom are interlocked, and they are present here today. The flags flying, the white grave markers, and all of us, the veterans and service members who protected our nation. It is you that we celebrate and honor today. Our work continues as citizens in supporting America's veterans and service members. JWV and VSOs must continue to fight for adequate funding for VA services and assure that issues facing veterans from all eras remain at the forefront. I call on each of you to take action and make your voice heard on issues we continue to face, including ending homelessness, increasing access to health care, delivering mental health care, reducing claims processing time, deploying integrated electronic health records, and addressing toxic exposure concerns in a comprehensive way. Seated throughout the amphitheater this morning are the leaders of many veteran service organizations. Every VSO was created with the purpose to advocate for the unique needs of the veteran community. VSOs understand and work tirelessly to maintain and improve the benefits we earn. There is strength in numbers, and veterans must continue to be strong advocates and have our voices heard. When the Jewish War veteran celebrated its 100th anniversary, our national commander, Robert Zweiman, also addressed this gathering. His closing remarks that day are just as powerful today as they were in 1996. He said, and I quote, Never should our government presume that by setting aside but one day, they have met their obligation to the survivors of yesterday's wars and today's or tomorrow's conflicts. We welcome your thoughts that this is not merely a singular day of honor, but indeed a public recognition of obligation to service. And we welcome your concerns that such obligation must be answered with compassion and with resolve." End quote. I stand before you as a veteran myself. As we honor, celebrate, and share thanks, we must remain vigilant and continue to ensure that the freedoms, benefits, and services we enjoy today remain with us for centuries to come. May God bless those who have earned the title of veteran, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the 11th Secretary of Veterans Affairs, the Honorable Dennis McDonough. Before coming to VA, Secretary McDonough served as the 26th White House Chief of Staff, working across the cabinet to develop and execute critical U.S. priorities in national security and domestic policy. Before his tenure as Chief of Staff, he served as Principal Deputy National Security Advisor. Chief of Staff of the National Security Staff, Deputy National Security Advisor for Strategic Communications, and Chair of the National Security Council's Deputies Committee. In all of those roles, 
He helped lead the administration's work on behalf of veterans and military families. He believes deeply, as he testified to Congress, that there is no more sacred obligation nor noble undertaking than to uphold our promises to our veterans, whether they came home decades ago or days ago. Join me in welcoming the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Dennis McDonough. Thanks, Alan, for that very generous introduction, for your service to our country, and for leading today's fantastic host organization, Jewish War Veterans of the United States of America. Mr. President, welcome. My deepest thanks to you and to the First Lady for being here. We are forever grateful for your leadership, for your unwavering support of our nation's veterans, their families, caregivers, and survivors. Let me also acknowledge the distinguished leaders from the Cabinet, Congress, VA, Veteran Service Organizations, Veteran Family and Caregiver Advocacy Organizations, and our Veterans Day National Committee. It's great to be here with you. Most of all, thanks to the veterans, their families, caregivers, and survivors with us this morning. This day is your day and it's an honor to spend it with you. Each year, America pauses on November 11th to remember and recognize those men and women who fought our nation's wars and defended us during periods of restless peace. From the beginning of our fight for independence at Lexington and Concord to the end of the longest war in American history in Afghanistan, millions of veterans have risked their lives to preserve the democratic ideals of this great nation. We live in peace and prosperity today because of them and because of you. On this day, we must not only appreciate those great blessings and the vets who delivered them, we must also remember the terrible cost at which they came. Veterans have told us of the costs of war throughout history. In letters home from World War II, Captain George Montgomery of the 82nd Airborne Division described his experience on D-Day, writing, I never in my wildest dreams knew such terror could drip your, grip your very soul. Senator Max Cleland, an indefatigable patriot, hero of the war in Vietnam, and the father of the modern VA who passed away earlier this week, echoed that sentiment, writing, war is as close to hell on earth as anything ever could be. Sentiments like these have been expressed by veterans of every conflict, those who bore the bloody battles of the American Civil War, the hellish trenches of the First World War, the frozen mountains of Korea, the jungles of Vietnam, and the cities, deserts, mountains of Iraq and Afghanistan. Many service members gave their last full measure of devotion during those wars, some of whom now rest on the hallowed grounds of the cemetery or in the tomb of the unknown soldier, which, as of today, has stood for 100 years. Other brave service members come home as veterans. But for those veterans, those wars did not end when the final bullet was fired, nor when the final service member came home. Instead, those wars live on, in their minds and in their bodies, in scars visible and invisible, sometimes for years, sometimes forever. This day, Veterans Day, is our day to honor the vets who made those sacrifices, a day to remember what they've done for us, a day to recognize that when those veterans serve and sacrifice, so do their families, their caregivers, their survivors. But critically, Veterans Day is also a call to action, a reminder that it's our sacred responsibility as Americans to serve those who have served our country. That call to action dates all the way back to 
President Lincoln's second inaugural, when he charged a wounded nation to care for those who shall have borne the battle and for their families, survivors, and caregivers. And that same call echoes today when President Biden reminds us that our nation's most sacred obligation is to prepare and equip troops we send into harm's way and to care for them and their families when they return home. At VA, that means we're providing veterans with world-class health care, with benefits they've earned and so rightly deserve, with a lasting resting place that's a tribute to their service. And with President Biden's leadership, VA is doing exactly that, providing more care, more benefits, and more, to more veterans than at any time in our nation's history. But this day reminds us that it's not just the job of VA to serve veterans, their families, survivors, and caregivers. It's the job of every American. Because whenever someone signs up to honor our country in the military, our nation makes them a simple promise. You take care of us, we'll take care of you. If you fight for us, we'll fight for you. If you serve us, we'll serve you when you come home. The thing is, our nation as a whole makes that promise. But it's on all of us, every single one of us, to keep that promise. There are many ways to do that. From reaching out to the veterans in your life, to lending a hand when a veteran needs help, to doing your small part to uphold the principles of democracy for which veterans have fought and bled, to defend whatever the method. Serve veterans and serve them well. Remember their sacrifices. Recog recognize their service and recommit and renew your pledge to them because that is our most sacred responsibility as Americans on this Veterans Day and every day. I know of no one who keeps that promise better than President Biden. As a senator, as vice president, and now as president, and as the surviving father of an Iraq War veteran, President Biden has dedicated so much of his life to serving those who have served us, veterans, their families, survivors, and caregivers could not ask for a stronger advocate. And so, without further ado, it is my great personal and professional honor to present to you our Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Folks, uh, being President of the United States, you are afforded many opportunities to try to express your love, commitment, and admiration for the American people. And I must say to you, the single greatest honor I have been afforded as President is to stand before so many of you, those Medal of Honor winners out there, to talk about Veterans Day and Veterans. I want to welcome all the Cabinet members and honored guests joining us today, including the father of our Secretary of State who served in the Army Air Corps during World War II, Ambassador Donald Blinken, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday. Thank you for your service to our country. And I just want to tell you, I know you're a little younger than I am, but, uh, you know, I've adopted the attitude of the great Negro at the time, 
pitcher in the Negro Leagues, went on to become a great pitcher in the pros in the Major League Baseball after Jackie Robinson. His name was Satchel Paige. And Satchel Paige, on his 47th birthday, pitched a win against Chicago. <laughs> and all the press went in and said, Satch, it's amazing. 47 years old, no one's ever, ever pitched a win at age 47. How do you feel about being 47? He said, boys, that's not how I look at it. I said, how do you look at it, Satch? I said, I look at it this way. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? I'm 50 years old, and the ambassador's 47. But all kidding aside, Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your service during World War II as well as your service as an ambassador. And thank you for raising such a fine man, Tony Blinken, our Secretary of State. To all our veterans, past and present, we thank you, we honor you, and we remember always what you've done for us. I'd like to recognize one of our national heroes who is here today, Medal of Honor recipient, Mr. Brian Thacker. During the Vietnam War, then First Lieutenant Thacker put the safety of his fellow troops above his own, providing cover fire against an attacking enemy, and even calling in artillery fire on his own position so our forces had a better chance to withdraw. Wounded, unable to leave the area, he evaded capture for eight days until finally federal friendly forces retook the position. Yours is a remarkable story. It will never be forgotten. We'll also never forget the stories of American leaders and icons we've lost recently, who shaped our nation in ways that are hard to measure. I've lost, like many of you, three good friends in the last month. General Colin Powell, a child of immigrants who grew up to be the Joint Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Secretary of State, a man who was a friend but who earned the universal respect of Americans and people for his leadership in uniform and out. And a guy who became good friends and many times I was in and out of Iraq as a Vice President and a Senator, General Ray Ordierno, who I met multiple times in Iraq and who did so much to help get us where we are today who always put the troops and his veterans first. It was an honor to have my son, Major Biden, serve under his command at the time. And my friend and colleague who's mentioned already, United States Senator Max Cleland, who as a triple amputee, knew the cost of war as well as anyone could ever know it, and went on to champion the dignity and care of Americans and wounded veterans throughout his life. We lost all three of these incredible veterans in the last several weeks, and our hearts go out to their families. These are stories that inspire generation after generation of Americans to step forward to defend our nation. And today, we pay homage to the unrelenting bravery and dedication that distinguishes all those who have earned the title of American veteran. It's an honor that not only a small percentage of Americans can claim, and one that marks those who are able to claim it as brothers and sisters, it's a badge of courage that unites across all ages, regardless of background, because to be a veteran is to have endured and survived challenges most Americans will never know. You've come through the trials and testing, brave dangers and deprivations, face down, tragic realities of war and death. And you've done it for us. You've done it for America. To defend and serve American values. To protect our country and our Constitution against all enemies. And to lay a stronger, more secure foundation on which future generations can continue to build a more perfect union. Each of our veterans is a link in a proud chain of patriots that has stood in the defense of our country from Bunker Hill to Bella Woods 
Gettysburg to Iwo Jima, Chosen Reservoir to Konar Valley. Each, each understood the price of freedom, and each shouldered that burden on our behalf. Our veterans represent the best of America. You are the very spine of America, not just the backbone. You're the spine of this country. And all of us, all of us owe you. And so on Veterans Day, and every day we honor that great debt and recommit ourselves to keeping our sacred obligation as a nation to honor what you've done. We have many obligations to our children, to our elderly, to those truly in need. But I've gotten in trouble way back when I was a young senator for saying we only have one truly sacred obligation. We have many obligations, but one truly sacred obligation to properly prepare those and equip those who we send into harm's way and care for them and their families while they're both deployed and when they return home. This is a lifetime sacred commitment. It never expires. And for me and for Jill and for the entire Biden family, it's personal. When Bo was deployed to Iraq after spending six months in Kosovo as an assistant U.S. attorney trying to help, help trying to set up a criminal justice system, I got a call from him one day. He said, Dad, what are you doing Friday? And I said, what do you need, hon? I'm, what do you need? He said, I'd like you to pin my bars on. I said, what in the heck have you done? He said, someone's got to finish these wars, Dad. True story. Jill and I learned what it meant to pray every day for the safe return of someone you love. So many of you have done that. Our grandkids learned what it meant to have their dad overseas in a war zone instead of back at home for a year, tucking them in the bed and reading that story every night. Thousands of Americans, tens of thousands, have had that experience. As the English poet John Milton wrote, they also serve who only stand and wait. For all the mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, spouses, all those who stand alongside our veterans and their families, caregivers, survivors. You are the solid steel spine that bears up under every burden, the courageous heart that rises every challenge. We've asked so much of you for so long, and our nation is grateful. For two decades, the lives of our service members and their families and veterans have been shaped by the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Since 9-11, hundreds of thousands of Americans have served. So many are still serving today in harm's worry, and we cannot forget them. The American people are forever grateful and in awe of what you've accomplished. But in fulfilling their mission, so many veterans and their families and caregivers have been through hell, some facing deployments after deployment, spending months and years away from their families, missing birthdays, anniversaries, and collections. I remember one of the last times I flew into Iraq in the so-called silver bullet. I remember walking up to this, the cockpit, and the crew masters along with the pilots were up there, and I said, how many of you, is this your first Tour. No one raised their hand. There were five people. Second tour, no one raised their hand. Third tour, two raised their hand. Fourth tour, two raised their hand. Fifth, one raised their hand. Folks, on Veterans Day, we have to always remember that there's nothing low risk or low cost about war the women and men who fight it. I carry with me in my pocket every single day. I have my staffs to check with the Defense Department. In the back of my schedule, I have 
U.S. daily troops in Afghanistan killed and wounded. U.S. daily troops in Iraq killed and wounded. 52,323, not roughly 53,000. Every one of these individuals has a family, has a unit at home. 53,000. 323 American servicemen and women wounded in the conflicts of Iraq and Afghanistan. 7,074 gave their lives. The last four measures of devotion. Untold, thousands more return home, as our Secretary can tell you, with unseen psychological wounds of war, the enduring grief borne by our Gold Star families. These are the cost of war that they'll carry, will carry as a nation for decades to come. And all veterans, service members, their families, caregivers, survivors, I want you to know that our administration is going to meet the sacred obligation that we owe you. We're going to work with Congress, Republicans and Democrats together to make sure our veterans receive the world-class benefits that they've earned and meet the sacred and the specific care specific needs that they each individually need. That means expanding presumptive conditions for toxic exposure, particulate matter, including Agent Orange and burn pits. We're going to keep pushing on this front to be more nimble and responsive, reviewing all the data and evidence to determine additional presumptive conditions to make sure our veterans don't have to wait to get the care they need. It also means prioritizing mental health care that's necessary to treat the invisible wounds that so many of our veterans carry, including pursuing our newly released comprehensive public health strategy to reduce military and veteran suicides. I want to say clearly to all our veterans, if you're struggling, you're so used to never asking for anything. If you're struggling, reach out. Call the Veterans Crisis Line. You're having trouble thinking about things. It's no different than if you had a wound in your arm. It make, it's also making sure that the growing population of women and LGBTQ plus veterans receive appropriate services and support. As we continue our efforts to defeat the pandemic and build back better, it means keeping the needs of veterans front and center. The American Rescue Plan included $17 billion to support VA's COVID-19 response, to get vaccination, vaccine shots in arms as fast as possible, and to fund programs that provide rapid retraining assistance for veterans who may have lost their jobs in the pandemic, housing assistance, debt forgiveness, to invest in improving VA facilities and the living conditions of vulnerable veterans. Through Jill's work of joining forces, we're also working to support our veterans and military families, survivors and caregivers, so they can have what they need to thrive. They deserve it. As Secretary McDonough noted, this Veterans Day also marks the centennial of one of the most hallowed American monuments, the Tomb of the Unknowns. A hundred years ago today, an American soldier of the First World War, as the tomb says, known but to God, end of quote, completed the voyage from an unidentified battlefield in France over the rough Atlantic seas here to Arlington National Cemetery. He lay in state under the Capitol Rotunda for two days the same plinth that held the body of Lincoln as 90,000 Americans came to pay respects. On the final leg of his journey, he was escorted from the Capitol by the President of the United States, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, members of Congress, General Pershing, and the Chiefs of Staff, Medal of Honor recipients, all walking, as the Washington Post said, processing without parallel, to give honor due to American servicemen. I serve American servicemen. 
not just the anonymous soul today entombed in gleamy marble, but the generations of Americans who dared all, risked all, gave all for the cause of freedom. To commemorate in the wounds of the member, in the words of a member of Congress who proposed the legislation creating the memorial, an American warrior, quote, this is the quote, who typifies the soul of America. You veterans of the soul of America, America's soul. That's why our veterans have always fought, always been willing to put themselves on the line. That the first unknown lies now with his brethren, unnamed warriors from later wars, fellow patriots who picked up the mantle of honor and made it their burden. Today, a hundred years later, we keep a sacred watch over their graves. Generations of elite sentinels have taken the post, pledging their eternal vigilance. We lay wreaths, we renew our oath, we stand in solemn awe of such fidelity. Because for us to keep faith with American veterans, we must never forget exactly what was given us. But each of them is willing to put on the line for us. We must never forget that it is the mighty arm of the American warrior, never bending, never breaking, never yielding, generation after generation, has secured for us the blessings of a nation that still stands today as a beacon of liberty, democracy, and justice around the world. God bless you all. God bless all American veterans and those who proudly earn that title. And may God protect our troops. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, and now the United States Coast Guard Band will play and the Armed Forces Chorus will sing, God Bless America.
be seated for the departure of the President of the United States and the official party. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate and honor all who served.